Hi, everyone. Thanks for coming. My name is Brian Barker, and you're probably wondering why is a guy uh, in a fire department uniform sitting up here? Um, I actually worked as a television news reporter for 11 years before I made the switch to uh, the fire side. And uh, I work as a communications officer for Tualatin Valley Fire and Rescue, which is the second largest fire department in the state of Oregon. And uh, I manage our uh, social media presence and our online presence. It's a, it's a great job, and I feel like I work for the good guys. I do work for the good guys. So, um, but a lot of these people here are my, my friends. Uh, I worked at K2 News most re recently for six years as a uh, TV reporter. And, you know, I left TV News two years ago, right when um, social media was really becoming a, a real useful tool for, um, for uh, television news stations. And I remember one of the things I hated the most about being a TV reporter was somebody dies uh, in, in a crime, and it's your job to go knock on the door of either the family or the bad guy. Um, who, and the bad guy always has a big, mean dog. And, um, and because you're trying to get a comment, or, or you're trying to find uh, the bad guy. And that was always really hard to do. When social media came along, and I, this was just happening when I left, you could actually reach out on Twitter or Facebook and ask your viewers, ask your public, and sometimes people would come forward and say, oh yeah, I, I know where that guy lives, I know who that guy is, uh, and I, in fact, I've got some dirt on that guy. And it was a great way to gather the news. You know, I know a lot of us in here are government employees, and so our, our hope today is, is to give you some insight into um, how they gather the news and um, uh, maybe how you can get your message out. Maybe see how see how they work so let's get started um, and we'll just kind of run down the list here and and um, if, if you guys um, uh, have any suggestions just let me know um, the first question is can you give me some examples of how you've used Twitter or Facebook to gather the news and we'll start with Frank Mungem from KGW sure and probably say who we are to I manage uh, kgw.com our news website and uh, our social media strategies of Facebook and Twitter uh, the best example I can give uh, happened at 2 in the morning uh, during the tsunami uh, alert uh, when Japan had its earthquake and uh, we had the risk of potential tsunami here in the Oregon coast. And the story broke, uh, you know, around 10.30, 11 o'clock at night and I wound up from home in my pajamas, which is what's great about social media <laughs> and the web, you can actually do reporting without going to work. Uh, reporting as we learned information out on Twitter. And so, yes, we published to our website, but there were times where I put it on, on Twitter first because people need to know. And it's, we're not trying to get page views at that point. We're trying to inform the public. I mean, we're trying to inform them on every platform. So we'd put it on our website, but then we'd also tweet it. And really, for the first time at that level, we used Facebook not as a, hey, fun, here's a cute behind the scenes photo from the set, but Facebook as a way of reporting the news. But then what was really interesting was Facebook became a crowdsourcing platform for viewers at the coast where they were posting onto my posts additional local information. I mean, we didn't have somebody at the coast yet. It, you know, the story is an hour and a half, two hours old. It was really fascinating to watch the conversation happen on our Facebook page. So not only were we using it when we got alerts and the, the key website that reports uh, tsunami warnings was actually trailing, you know, they were behind, and so we knew and had reported that it had gone from a watch to a warning, and the key website didn't have that on there. So we were able to put that on Facebook, but then folks at the coast were, hey, we just had, you know, 3 a.m., the warning siren just went off in Newport, and it was really fascinating to see that dialogue take place. Well, and I just want to interject, so and what were you doing with that information in those pictures? Was that then getting transmitted yeah, yeah, over that, there. That's the 360 phenomenon. You know, I come, my whole background, 25 years, is TV pushing information through the box at the viewer. And this 360, where our news desk is then, you, we've got warm leads, people we can contact to interview, uh, information that we can report on air, saying online, someone is telling us this, phone calls we can make to confirm that. That's great. Anita? Well, in regards to so many staffing cuts, we don't have the staff anymore to send to all of those places. And suddenly you have all of this content now that we didn't have before that we desperately need because on the tsunami night, especially, you're filling 24 hours of news. Those are things that we would not have been able to do with the limited crews that we had. The example I can think of is, do you guys all remember the PDX boom? What was that, about a year ago? 
that was a phenomenon. People heard it and started tweeting about it with that hashtag, and it exploded into comedy, yes, as people came up with clever little lines for it. But it really let us pinpoint who was hearing it, in what areas, and how far away people were. And we sent a reporter the next day to the area where most people were hearing it. She was able to walk around and actually find the spot where there was a pipe bomb, that we would not have been able to do that had we not had so much information from hundreds of people who were following that hashtag and able to do that. I, I, we use it not only to find people, but to get story ideas, to tweet out, hey, do you know about this? You know, Can you contact us with this information? Get sent different places. It is invaluable. I, have, I don't know how we did our job, honestly, beforehand. <laughs> without this, because you do, you have direct access to people. I'm not sure if Mayor Sam Adams is still here, but I've tweeted questions to him and been able to get a response back sooner than I ever would have been able to go through his PR person, calls back, that kind of thing. So it's, it's direct access, it's unbelievable. Great examples, and for those of you who don't know, Carl Click uh, tweets from the anchor desk as he anchors the K2 newscast, and that's you know that's that's something that doesn't sound really good though, does it? <laughs> <laughs> but how cool is that that you can actually reach out and talk to an anchor on the set during a newscast? Uh, that and Facebook as well. Um, Anita doesn't remember how we used to do it. I'm old enough. I've been in the business about 30 years. It used to be a, a, an AP or UPI wire that just cranked things out. We had to wait, wait long enough for it to print and then rip it off. And, and so it's so much you know, more uh, fast with Twitter and Facebook and social media now. A couple examples, and Frank mentioned the tsunami. Uh, we were on the air continually from 11 o'clock at night till the next day. And I came in and started about 2.30 in the morning. And I remember the first reference I saw to the Fukushima nuclear plant was on Twitter from a news agency. And we're being asked to talk about things live the coast, Japan, Alaska, things that are going on, and we need to gather information. We need stuff to put out. And when I'm not talking, I'm on Twitter, and we have a feed, and I'm watching CNN and Reuters and everybody, and that's the first place that I saw something about that, and something clicked, and, we, and I, I think I said on the air, this is going to be the biggest part of this story after we recover from the tsunami wave and the warning on our coast is what's going on. And it was just from a Twitter feed from uh, some news agency. It came out a lot faster there than it did off the old teletype machine. Um, so I do a lot of things live on the air because I'm anchoring the morning newscast. And oftentimes, our producers will say, hey, there's a fire in Houston, Texas. It's huge. It's five alarms. They have helicopters. And we'll take the Houston feed from a helicopter of an ABC affiliate there. But I still need information to talk about. And if I can't get it from the wire, um, I'll go on Twitter and search. And someplace, there's a TV station or somebody in, if I just searched you know, Houston fire building, I'll get information. Now, I do preface, if I bring that over the air, this is from Twitter, who is it from? I'm still sourcing that information, and people need to understand that if I say it's from Twitter, somebody said it in 140 characters, and that's it. So, that, so there's, there's some kind of qualification to that, but it's still a source for breaking news like that. Great examples, thanks. So I, I remember when I was a TV reporter, uh, you would go out and you'd get that exclusive detail that you don't think anyone else has, but you don't know if Kylie Boshi over at KGW has that detail. And so you hold it, and that's kind of the exciting thing. You wait until the 5 o'clock news or the 11 o'clock news, and then you break that detail or you break that story. Do you withhold these days information from Twitter or Facebook so that you can then break that news on your newscast? Or is it more important to get that information out and so you're the one who broke it, just in case Kylie Boshi comes along at you know, 10 minutes after you do with, uh, and breaks the same news? I'll let, I don't break news like Anita does, so <laughs> I'm the last to know. That's a hard question. It, it depends on how specific the information is, because I'm not foolish to know that my bread and butter is my television station, which pays my paycheck, which earns money by people, eyeballs, watching the news or going to the internet. So I have to protect that. If it's an event that I'm going to that's happening that I know everybody's going to know about, I want to be the first. I'm going to tweet about it. I'm going to get there. I'm going to pull my phone out. I'm going to look at who the other reporters are, and I'm going to see if I can beat them with a picture and some information. If it's a tidbit on a story that I've been working for a few days, information that I know nobody else has because I've worked hard to get that, I'm going to protect that information. I might tease to it a little bit, but I don't want to give the competition the leg up for the next hour talking about it on Twitter from 4 o'clock 
on, that gives the competition a whole hour to figure out exactly that same information and have it by 5 o'clock. We, we can't do that. We're not in the position yet where news is the moneymaker. The moneymaker for television stations and newspapers is, of course, the actual content that we put out there. That said, I think that you can't ignore Twitter. And, and we talked about this a little bit. There are new guidelines that say you should never break news on Twitter. You should always break news on your station website so that you get the clicks that count. I don't know if I agree that with that so much because in some situations you want your brand to have weight and your brand is more than just your website. Your brand is your reporters, it's, it's the content that you're putting out there. You want people to think in their head, breaking news, K2 News or KGW, those kinds of things. So if you aren't giving some information, I don't think you're going to have that. It's just you have to protect those things that you've worked really hard to generate on your own. I think the tidbit way of talking about it is a good example. A tidbit that you sure no one has, I can see holding that. Uh, you know, that guidelines for reporters is actually put out by newspaper editors, and I think that says a lot. Uh, that's, to me, a 10-year-old way of thinking, and that's ridiculous. If you want to be counted for for breaking news, you, div you give people the news wherever they are as soon as you have it confirmed. Report what you know when you know it. We're in a service business, and that's a disservice to withhold that kind of information. And so when I, I read that study, and it just cracked me up that they're telling their newspaper people to not put the information out when they have it, to sit on it. And what we found, you know, so, so you can do it for the right reasons, which is inform the public, or you can, for selfish reasons, also put the news out when you get it, because frankly, half the time that we think we have an exclusive and, and we might try to hold it for the five, well, our reporter had a source who had the information. Is it really likely that there is only one person who has that information who only talked to one person? So half the time that we tried that back in the day of like, well, we'll hold it for the five. Somebody else ran it at four, and then not only did we get beat at five, but we missed out on the chance to really establish the brand, which is, look, when news breaks, we will tell you on whatever platform we can on whatever platform you choose to receive it. So my short answer is, when news breaks, we report it. And we put it on, we don't feel the urge to have to have a URL on our website to drive clicks through. And a great example was yesterday or the day before. This week is a blur. Uh, the judge decides that we're going to have a death row execution on August 16th. That's big news. We tweeted it. I mean, Oregon hasn't had an execution in 14 years. We didn't have a story on the website yet. We only knew one sentence at that point. So there was no more information that we were withholding. We tweeted what we knew. We wrote a story. As we added background, which is history of executions, we tweeted that link. But I think when you have news, you report news. I want to. I want to qualify my statement. The example I can give would be some, some exclusive emails we got from Terry Horman during the Kyron Horman investigation. Those are absolutely things I'm not going to put on Twitter in 140 characters because that's something that we worked weeks to get. In that kind of situation, it's not technically breaking news in the sense that something's happening at this point. Never would we hold breaking news, this is happening, you need to know about it, this is what you need to know, this is how it's going to impact you. It's those those special things that we've been working on, those enterprise stories that we're not going to tweet because that is something that is not necessarily the right forum at that point. It's a forum after the fact in those situations, I think, to encourage discussion about that information. But those are special things that we enterprised. And that would be the example I would give of, of with, when you would withhold something. All right, I, I want to leave a little bit of time for questions here because I know, I'm sure some of you guys have some great questions. Uh, but briefly, what is the wrong way to use social media, Facebook, Twitter, and a newsroom? <laughs> Carl, you want to go last or you want to go first? <laughs> well, I don't know if we found that yet because it is so new. Um, but I know we have people that follow uh, our K2 News social media, which would be Facebook or Twitter, and most of us have individual accounts. Um, and, and I would think the wrong way would be to just saturate people with information over and over again, most of it being uh, what you might call promotion or teases, and without giving uh, content. Um, and I, I think we 
over time have learned that it, the more you do that and, and you're not um, you know, selective about what you're actually communicating to the people who are following you, you're just gonna, you're just gonna bore them and, and, and saturate them with too much stuff that they're not gonna be interested. I think the wrong way to use it is to not use it. I mean, we have this platform here that doesn't cost you any money to set up an account. And to not want to interact with your viewers to me is foolish. And to use it as just a tease machine coming up at five, you're going to see blah. That's completely misusing it. And I see a lot of stations, not necessarily in this market, that are still doing that. And there should be no reason that every story that gets posted on our website isn't then linked on Twitter and Facebook, too. I mean, these are platforms that we have access to brand new people that maybe, you know, in this market, a lot of people tell us they don't have televisions. And, and there's a way to reach those people who don't have televisions but still value news. So I think, hands down, not using it is the biggest mistake you can make. Yeah. Uh, shameless self-promotion. Content-free tweets, you know, if you want content, come later. I hate those. Uh, no click-through. Give me a place to go. Uh, I love the idea of not using it is, is, you know, arguably the biggest I would say the biggest mistake is not listening. Using it as a talk-only one-way channel. The unbelievable uh, information that we get by listening and by following rather than just pushing. And, and is that how professional communicators can get your attention? I wouldn't want them to ban the other ways. I mean, in real time for breaking news, we're following thousands and thousands of people, but I wouldn't want to not get the email, not get the phone call. I mean, really, we're, it's sort of Carl's example of we are multi-platform communicating and, and we haven't abandoned the others. It's so just a bigger mix. We've got three minutes. Does anyone have questions? Uh, yes, sir. Absolutely. For, uh, I'll speak for KJW. We have niche Twitter channels, and I think that's really important to be context specific. You know, Anita does a lot of things as a reporter on her account that I would never do on the station breaking news account, and vice versa. In the same way, our, our breaking news account is breaking news. I mean, we know what you signed up for. We're not going to bug you with a bunch of other stuff. I'm always saying no to the programming department. Like, Can you put this on about an NBC show? No. Uh, on Facebook, we put funny videos. You know, we put photos from behind the set. Jeff's not here. Jeff Giannola uploads during the show. He uploads photo photos of this is what's going on during the newscast. Uh, people enjoy and want a relationship on Facebook. Twitter, there's a lot of just the facts, at least for the news channel. that I. Well, and it, it depends, too. Like, the time of night, I notice my Twitter followers get silly about 10 o'clock. <laughs> and so there are things that I'll say on my personal account at 10 o'clock that I necessarily wouldn't say during the day when people are after more news. I know we've talked about you. Yes. Yeah, and Facebook, I really genuinely believe that people are friending me. So I'm going to show them a thousand pictures of my dog, and I apologize for that in advance. But those are things that people expect when they friend you. I'm not just going to give you news, because if you want news, you're going to follow the K2 page. If you want to know us, if you want to know the behind the scenes stuff that's going on, then you're going to follow us, and, and we're going to give that to you. It, yeah, and you know we're in this interaction uh, business where people want to know us or feel as though they know us. They say it all the time. So on Facebook, I'm a lot more personable, a lot more personal information. Uh, so people get to know us. We want them to be our friends. We want them to be friends on Facebook. We want to feel as though we're their friends when we're telling them the news as well. We have one minute, one question. The gentleman in the red shirt. Well, that, like to thank you for that. We we get we have to get a lot of information about a lot of things, and that's just a colloquialism in our business of of get, gathering information. Then it has to be um, examined and edited and verified and, and and verified and sourced. 
So, and not reported. It's something that you, you verify and gather all that information and then report. It creates time. a picture. And we would never publish something that wasn't.